Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at F equals MA in two dimensions this time, so with an I and a J component, so we can answer questions from exercise 10D. So not much has changed in F equals MA in two dimensions, we're just working with an I and a J component. So let's look at a question here then, a force of uh, 3I plus 8J newtons acts on a particle of 0.5 kilograms. We've got a few questions here to answer. So find the acceleration of the particle pi plus qj in meters per second squared. So substitute in your, um, your values here. So you've got force equals 3i plus 8j. You've got 0.5 as the mass and you've got a on its own there. We want to find out what the acceleration is. So double both sides, double both components there and we'll have 6i plus 16j meters per second squared. So that effectively means that we are, if we're thinking about a Cartesian coordinate grid, x and y axis, that every second that goes past, we're increasing our speed by 6 in the x direction, and for every second that goes past, we're increasing our speed by 16 in the y axis direction. Find the magnitude and the bearing of the acceleration of the particle. Well, that's exactly the same as it would be for any force, so you move 6 right, 16 up. Work out the magnitude by doing a bit of Pythagoras' theorem. So we get 17.1 there, and the bearing is going to be from north, and we'll have to do a bit of trigonometry to get 69.4 here. So the bearing from the north line is going to be 20.6, or 0 0.21 as a final answer bearing. Okay, so the main part of this question here came up here. There's not much difference in F equals MA when you've got a force that's in two dimensions and an acceleration that's in two dimensions. It's just these two parts here and here they're going to be in two dimensions. The, the M here, the uh, mass, is just going to be one dimension. It's going to be effectively a scalar multiple, so it's just a number like 3, 5. It's not going to have a two-dimensional mass. Just a number. Okay, uh, another question here then. Three forces as follows. 2i plus 4j minus 5 plus 4j newtons and 6i minus 5j newtons. Uh, all of these particles, all of these forces are acting on a particle of mass 3 kilograms. Find the acceleration of the particle. Well, first thing what we'd want to do here is find the overall force when we sum up them together. So adding these forces together, and we get 3i plus 3j. And we want to find the acceleration on a particle of mass 3 kilograms, so F equals ma. And the reason they've appeared in bold this time here is to signal that these are our uh, two-dimensional vectors. So substitute them in, 3i plus 3j from the resultant vector. m is 3 and a is what we want to find out, so divide both sides by 3, and we get i plus j equals a, so it's i plus j meters per second squared. Okay, the next part here then, a bit more in context, a boat is modelled as a particle of mass 60 kilograms and is acted on by three forces, maybe current, uh, force from the engine, etc, etc. Um, so three forces that look like this, and we have a question here. Given that the boat is accelerating at a rate of 0 0.8 minus 1.5 meters per second squared, think of the I, think of the top rows as I's, think of the bottom rows as J's. Find the value of P and Q, and P and Q appears in the F2 force here. So as I said, think of the top value as I, think of the bottom value as J. So what we want to do first is find the resultant between our three forces. If all three forces are acting on it, then we want to know the total force that's acting on it. So 10p plus 5 and 20q plus 150 uh, newtons. So this force times by, uh, so this force then equals mass of 60 times by our acceleration. So we've got force, the, the resultant force that we found from all three of those forces added up together, equals mass 60 times acceleration, 0 0.8 times uh, 0 0.8 over minus 1.5. 
So expand out your right hand side and then solve for P by using the top row and solve for Q by using the bottom row. So looking at the top row on both of the vectors here, 10P plus 5 equals 48, so P is therefore 4.3. And solving for Q on the bottom row, we get Q is equal to minus 12. So there we are, those are the values of P and Q, final answer 4.3 and Q is minus 12. Right, so moving on to this next question here now, we're going to look at parallel vectors. So what we've got is two vectors here, A and B. A is 3i minus j, and B is i plus j. And we want to find the value mu such that if we do the first vector add some multiple of the second vector, and that multiple is going to be our mu value, uh, and we add them together, we want that vector that results from that to be parallel to 3i plus j. Okay, so let's start off by adding these two vectors together, but times in b by the value mu. So a plus mu b, multiply them out, group your i's and j's together, and then factorize out the i from the i parts and the j from the j parts. So you see here I've grouped my i's together here and j's together here, and then factorize them out, i's first and then j's second. Now, what I want is for this vector here, once I've combined them in this way that we've just done, is for it to be parallel to 3i, which will go 3 to the right, and 1 up. So, 1, 3 to the right, and 1 up. So, effectively then, if you times the y components here by 3, you're going to get exactly the same as what you'd get on the x component. Or in other words, to do with i's and j's, if you times this part on the j components by 3, then you're going to have exactly what you want on the x component if you want your vector to be parallel to 3i plus j. Effectively, you're going to times 3 by the other part of the vector here to get the two to equal each other. Okay, so let's do that. Let's set 3 plus mu equal to 3 times the j component and then expand the brackets and see what you get. And here we get 2, so 3 equals mu. Okay, so let's just see this in action here. Let's substitute that back in. So it's going to be 3i minus j add 3 lots of i plus j. So we will get here 6i and then it will be plus 2j. And you can clearly see here that that vector there is parallel to this vector here by a scale factor enlargement of 2. So when mu equals 3 and we combine our two vectors in such a way as to put a 3 in front here, we get a vector that's parallel to 3i plus j. Okay, so your turn to have a go at some questions now. Pause the video and try this one out. Okay, well done for having a go at these two questions then. Let's have a look at the first one. A resultant force of 4i plus 3j acts on a particle of mass m kilograms, causing it to accelerate at 20i plus 15j. Work out the mass of the particle. So in this case here, We've got two parts of our F equals MA formula, just not the mass. So it's 4i plus 3j equals m times by 20i plus 15j. And we can see here, comparing both the i components and the j components, that we need to take a fifth of the acceleration to get it to equal the force. So m here is equal to 0.2 kilograms. Okay, question six now uh, from the exercise 10D. Two forces, 2i plus 3j and qpi plus qj newtons act on a particle p. The resultant of the two forces is r. Given that r acts in the direction which is parallel to the vector minus i plus 4j, show that this is true. Okay, so what we need first is for the resultant components to be calculated. So P plus 2 for the I component and 3 plus Q for the J component. 
So that's the resultant of these two forces. And now we want for the um, direction vector to be parallel to this vector here. Now if we want it to be parallel to that vector there, we want it to go left by 1 and up by 4. So what we need then is for, let's call this the x component and the y component, is for the x component to be times by minus 4, and then it would be perfectly equal to each other. So we're going to times the i component by minus 4. Okay, so let's do that then. So it's minus 4 times by 2 plus p, and that's going to equal 3 plus q. And then the two components should be equal then. So we're going to get minus 8 plus, so take away 4p equals 3 plus q. And adding everything onto the right hand side, we're going to get 0 equals 4p plus the q plus the 11, which is basically what we've got there. So we've shown it pretty well. Okay, uh, thanks very much for watching this video then. Have a go at lots of the exercises, um, so the questions from exercise 10D. Um, make sure you persevere through the difficult ones. Have a go at the ones later on in the exercise as well to challenge yourself and ask your teacher for help if you need any. Thanks very much for watching.